This is the intersection of Interstate 95 and SR4 in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Truckers have called it the most congested bottleneck in America for five years in a row. All these roads merge together, narrowing some 16 lanes into around seven, and ending up here, the George Washington Bridge, connecting New Jersey to New York. Delays here have cost an estimated $38 million due to lost time annually. So we asked a transportation engineer with about 25 years of experience for potential ways to fix this traffic. Because this area has been built up over time, physical improvements like adding lanes or shoulders might seem simple, but they're actually complex. It's cost prohibitive to widen the bridge to just add this much space. And more space could lead to more demand. So instead, Singh suggests focusing on creating more reliable traffic flow. With the major corridor, you may expect to see interchanges such as the Cloverleaf interchange, where we want to separate two major crossings and we want to raise one over the other. That's called grade separation. In this case, we would separate two major roadways and connect them with a series of ramps that would then allow you to get from one road to another. We typically use this in rural or suburban areas. So if we were to apply a cloverleaf interchange at this location, we would actually need to have a bigger footprint in order to make that work. As you can see, something of that size is really too large for this environment and it would require wiping out a lot of the neighborhood, a lot of the park space that's available for residents. And so for those reasons, we typically don't use those type of interchanges in an urban environment. A roundabout is another treatment that we use when we have the intersection of two or more major roadways. Roundabouts are beneficial in keeping the flow of traffic going while slowing drivers down, reducing crashes. So you'd think that perhaps a roundabout like this could help on our corridor. But the bridge has two levels. Getting all the roads to that same level in order to make those connections would be very challenging. Singh says this separation is meant to maximize the number of vehicles to push through the bottleneck. As you can see, we have large vehicles such as trucks on the upper level and passenger cars as well. On the lower level, we just have passenger cars where the trucks are slower moving, cars are a bit more nimble and faster moving. So by having the trucks and the buses operating independently is what we call traffic separation. It allows distribution of cars from the lower level to the upper level during very busy times in order to help balance that demand. So what we should be moving towards is recognizing we have a very robust roadway network in place. The question now is how can we take advantage of that operationally to improve the flow of traffic? Singh says creative solutions can help divert traffic away from the area's bottleneck altogether. Is there an infrastructure move that we can do to move trucks off of the GW Bridge? Today, the majority of trucks that deliver into Brooklyn, Queens, and Long Island come through the Verrazano Narrows Bridge or through our corridor. So there's really limited opportunities for them to cross into this area. And because there's no rail, all those goods have to be moved via truck. So 90% of the goods coming into New York City is transported via truck. Almost 200 million tons of freight are handled within New York City's five boroughs annually, servicing over 8.4 million residents and 4.5 million jobs. Another opportunity for major construction is a cross-harbor tunnel that would connect a major rail corridor in New Jersey with an established and existing corridor in Brooklyn. And that could allow the shipment of goods via rail to take some of those trips off of the road network. Currently, Port Authority is evaluating an option to add a freight tunnel running from Jersey City to Brooklyn as part of the Cross Harbor Freight Program. One major strategy that we want to look at is getting people out of cars and into transit. Strategies include congestion pricing, a policy that is already in the works. It would charge drivers more for access into high traffic areas during peak hours. And that money would go toward building out more public transportation. Currently, the rail network brings people in via Long Island Railroad, Metro North, or New Jersey Transit into Penn Station or Grand Central Station. But the proposal that's been put out is creating a more integrated regional rail network. And so, for example, we could connect some of the lines that end in Hoboken into Lower Manhattan and up into Grand Central Station, but then also going through and connecting to Columbus Circle to capture more of Upper West West Side and Northern Midtown, and then go back into New Jersey. An integrated rail network would help get more people out of cars, which would then reduce a lot of the congestion on our corridor. In 2022, New York Governor Kathy Hochul announced the groundbreaking of the Metro North Penn Station Access Project, 
which plans to add four new stations in the Bronx and expanded rail service to Connecticut and Westchester by 2027. According to the American Transportation Research Institute, congestion cost the trucking industry about $74.5 billion in 2018, and nearly 1.2 billion hours of delays due to traffic congestion on national highway systems, which directly impacts the cost of consumer goods. Singh says a variety of measures are needed to reduce all this red and make the roads more safe. The safer road network is going to eliminate a lot of the fatalities that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. It's also going to reduce the frequency of major crashes on the roadway blocking traffic. Autonomous driving technology for both personal and public transportation vehicles could help reduce crashes, he says. Think adaptive cruise control and lane centering. A lot of the technology that goes into autonomous vehicles are being implemented in cars right now, being implemented in buses, and so we can benefit from a lot of that safety and technology today. It's a long road ahead for widespread use of autonomous vehicles, and urban areas like this will always have high demand. So Singh says transportation professionals can only seek ways to help minimize congestion with multiple travel options for both trucks and consumers. Thank you.